Hello, I'm glad you're joining me today with the Prairie Land Advantage Virtual Planner Clinic. I'm going to talk to you today about the Maximerge 5 and the ME 5E seed meters. I'm Dave Yoder. I'm in the sales department in Hutchinson. I'm glad you're joining me. What we're going to talk about today is the seed meters on these on these Maximerge planters and no matter what you have today, most of these are all going to be very similar to, to our newer planners today as far as what we're going to talk about. Here's a couple examples of the the hoppers and that we have in different options today in different configurations. The Maximerge 5 row unit has been a really good row unit for us and the meters on each the, each of these uh, are very have been very reliable as far as our seed singulation and uh, we still use the same basic principle to in today's planters as what we have in the last 20, 25 years. The earlier planters, we had ground drive, chain drive. Today, we have variable rate hydraulic drive, section control, and those are some of the things we're also going to look at today. One of the differences and one of the benefits to, to, uh, to, to these meter, newer meters is the singulation and, and we're going to talk about that today. One of the characteristics in these in these uh, vacuum meters with the flat disc design is we it's important that we drive five or five and a half miles an hour just to minimize our seed bounce and and to, to get the best seed placement that we can. One thing that's changed in the last few years is the Pro, dra pro shaft drive series. No more chains to lube, no more links that are binding up. These pro shaft drives are lubed for life and have been working very well for us. Here's a couple examples of the chain drive row command and the pro shaft row command. So these, these clutches is what's shutting off the meter to eliminate overlap at the ends of the fields or when we're on an angle or or uh, at the end of the field most and uh, the chain drive has worked very well the pro shaft drive eliminates the chances of any linkage binding up the, here's a couple examples of the meter and the shape and how they've changed from the pro series to the me5 on the left you'll see the different hopper levels uh, there's a little less seed in the Pro Series than there is in the ME5. You can see there's a bigger opening on the uh, on this meter versus on this one over here. And just putting more seed in there, giving us a better chance of getting that cell filled up with seed as we're as we're planting. The ME5 hopper shutoff is a nice feature that uh, will allow you to empty your hopper without having to take the whole thing off and dumping it. Just opening up the tailgate and, and dumping the hopper, it's, it's a nice feature for us today. On the older uh, Pro Series hoppers, I'm sure some of you have had the issue of uh, the vents plugging when you're planting soybeans in your wheat stubble. Those worked, they made several updates and, and they worked well but uh, the newer planters now, the five, ME5E, has the, is getting its clean air from the blower fan, from the CCS fan. We're getting a lot more air, we're getting cleaner air, and it's just allowing that meter to do a lot better job and to stay clean and uh, just uh, working a lot. We've found it to work a lot better in, in our uh, no-till situations in our uh, soy, like I said, soybeans in, in wheat stubble. It, it's worked a lot better for us since we started using these. The Maximerge 5E, here we're looking uh, at the electric controlled seed meter. These, these uh, as you can see right here, each row now is controlled rather than using a, uh, a uh, chain to drive. We're using an electric motor on each row unit. No more chains, no more clutches. It uh, just one motor on each row unit gives us our curve compensation, which allows for better spacing, or, or I should say, less 
less overlap on uh, on the ends or on angles. Each row has a motor, and uh, but it's still designed to plant five miles an hour with this with this meter with this setup. The seed tube, which is that right below the seed meter. Very important to uh, check this out before you start the season. You want to make sure that the seed tube guard here is in good shape. So what happens through the season is it wears along this edge, which when it wears, it after that gets too skinny, it starts wearing into, into the seed tube, and you'll get a little curl in there. So you want to make sure that each one of those are in good shape. So here's a little uh, a little fact for you at uh, 26,000 seeds per acre on 30 inch corn at five and a half miles an hour at any given time there's 12 seeds in that seed tube at the same time so if you think about that that's uh kind of shows the importance of making sure that uh where there's no no worn parts or anything no lips or curls inside that seed tube want to make sure to eliminate any seed bounce or uh, or uh, just want to make sure that that uh, we're doing the best job we can uh, through our one of our most important passes of the year. We're going to look at some components in the 5e meters. As you can see our hopper and you can see uh, so we've got the inlet up top. We've got our double eliminator across the top. Here's where we adjust the double eliminator. We've got our, our meter full of corn, We've got the brushes along here, we've got our seal and our hub adjustment. So we today in today's planners we use a, a flat disc design and on the right hand side you can see we have a vacuum seal on our lid. We want to make sure it's in good shape. We have the knockout wheel and the wiper wheel. Want to look at the meter inspection a little bit and inspect those a little bit closer. We've got got the flat disc and the seal. We've got the knockouts. We want to make sure those are all in good shape. Want to look at our plates. We want to make sure that our seal in the center of the meter is in good shape. We want to make sure our brushes are in good shape. Both both brushes. We want to make sure those are good to start the season. We've got the uh, the uh, baffle in there and we'll go to the next slide here I'll show you. We've got two positions and we want to make sure that those are in the right position. Usually not, uh, I don't find too many guys having trouble remembering to put them up in corn but I've had a few guys forget to put them down in milo or sorghum and that doesn't work very good. You want to make sure we have them in the up position for large seeds and in the lower position for smaller seeds. The 5e meter on these Pro Max 40 plates or any plate, no matter if you're using a cell type plate or a Pro Max 40, you want to make sure and use graphite on that plate. It just lubes the disc and uh, will it'll uh, allow your your uh, seals on your on your uh, lids to last a lot longer. Here's a picture of it in the meter. You want to make sure that the, that it's adjusted correctly and uh, that the tension is right. Want to make sure that um, the uh, inner seal on the hub is in good shape also. Here's where you remove the clip and adjust the tension. You want to make sure that's set right for each crop. Smaller seeds you need it a little bit tighter. On the larger seeds you want to make sure you have about a quarter of a turn uh, after you spin it and I'll have a video to show you that. Hub height adjustment is essential for planting performance. Improper hub height can cause a variety of issues in planting. A loose hub can cause issues with seed leaking out between the hub and the disc. Also loss of engagement with the double eliminator. Here we see the hub height is set too tight. If the hub is set too tight, you will likely see excessive wear on the components due to disc drag. You will also likely experience multiple skips and spacing issues because of the excessive disc drag.
that's some good information there. Just something to keep top of mind when you're before you're getting started planting. So new to this year to us, we have a 64 hole soybean disc. In the past, we've had the 108 cell type plate to plant soybeans. We threw C three seeds at a time into that seed tube and uh, today with the 64 hole we're going to do a lot of better job of singulating our seed which I've, I've read a lot lately on how the seed singulation on soybeans has has helped improve our yield so we want to do that today uh, it's a great option now this is only four planting rates up to 50 seeds per second so you need to make sure uh, you need to double check that and make sure that it'll work for you. Might work in some dry line situations, probably not an irrigated. Also for the cotton guys, excited to announce that we have this option available for a cotton disc, a 64 cell flat cotton disc. Great, great uh, singulation and uh, will give us a, some great spacing uh, and uh, and we can use a wider range of vacuum on these new plates and it just helps improve our spacing. The double eliminator is what makes these flat disc design plates work for us. We're covering up half the hole and we're sucking on more seeds to make sure that each hole is filled and, and it will just give us a better job. We're going to eliminate any skips and make sure that every hole is filled as we're going through the field. We're going to set these with the knob on the back side of the meter. We want to make sure and calibrate each one, and we'll go over that here in a second. But each one of these has an adjusting knob, and uh, we're going to make sure we want to calibrate these as we're starting off each year. The As you can see on the left, this isn't normal, but these two holes need to line up. This This is where we calibrate the the double eliminator with your 5.30 seconds drill bit and uh, we put that through the through the meter and we make sure that uh, that we're uh, calibrating this we adjust it and make sure it's set at zero and if it if it doesn't come to zero we pull the pull the black knob off and we we calibrate it and make sure that each row is set just set uh, to zero here you can see I've got the the plate now in the meter, and I'm I'm checking to make sure that I'm at five, which is where we want to start the season. We want to make sure that uh, our double eliminator here. You can see the top of it; uh, it's covered up half of the hole, and uh, we want to make sure that's where we start. Want to make sure that this is at the high point of uh, of our uh, of our double eliminator. We want to make sure that they're all set the same. Want to start off the season at five. Here's a little uh, video showing the cotton disc that I was showing you. See, uh, you can tell all those seeds as they're dancing across there. Every hole is filled. That's what we want to see when it's set correctly. When we use any other plate other than a flat disc, we want to make sure that the double eliminator is pulled up and set at zero. The only time you will use a double eliminator is if you're using a flat disc design plate. Otherwise, it'll always be set at zero. During the off season, where do you store your plates? Well, the operator's manual tells you to store it in the sh in your original shipping box. Okay. I have seen a lot of different variations. I've seen people hang them on the wall. I've seen them stored. I've seen a lot of really neat brackets made to store them. Probably the most important part is to store them somewhere where it's uh, an even temperature, not too hot, not too cold. But don't uh, do not leave them in the meters in the off season, and don't store them under anything heavy so they're leaned up or something's leaned up against them. Just make sure they're they're uh, stored in a nice, even cooled temperature area. I want to thank you for joining me today and I uh, want to wish you guys all a very successful 2021 planning.